Hello dear students. Today we are going to discuss on the topic introduction to OFDM. So as we all know OFDM is the abbreviation which stands for orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And this OFTM is a very modern as well as very important wireless technology which is used in 4G cellular standards. Okay, this OFTM is used in 4G wireless cellular standards. Like as we all know LTE, okay, this is the 4G wireless cellular standard that is LTE. LTE this stands for long term evolution. So, OFTM is the basic principle behind LTE, not only in LTE, it is also used in WiMAX, okay, which is another 4G standard that is WiMAX, okay, which stands for Worldwide Interoperability Inter Operability for microwave access okay so not only for the wireless cellular standard but for WiMAX also okay and is also used in modern wireless Wi-Fi standards as well as okay Wi-Fi standards in Wi-Fi standards also this OFDM is the basic principle in the wireless Wi-Fi standards like 802.11n uh, 802.11 AC etc. So, in all this OFDM is the standing technology ok and the reason why we use OFDM in all these uh, wireless standards you know in 4G technology is because it is a broadband ok it is a broadband technology it is a broadband technology. which supports a very high data rate which is in excess of 100 Mbps ok. So, OFDM also it is a broad band technology which supports a very high data rate ok, very high data rate of or in excess of ok 100 Mbps and that is the reason why it is used in uh, 4G. So, in short we can say OFDM is a key broadband technology ok it is a key broadband technology with a very high data rate and what do you mean by broadband technology broadband broadband means what a higher bandwidth am I right so broadband means larger bandwidth bandwidth so we can say OFDM it supports a larger bandwidth as well ok larger bandwidth as well. So, OFDM operates on a larger bandwidth. If you look at the GSM and all, okay, if you look at the earlier uh, generation techniques that is GSM, GSM the bandwidth is only 200 kilohertz, okay, in GSM the bandwidth was only 200 kilohertz. But uh, when you look into OFDM, if you look into OFDM, uh, the bandwidth has been increased to say up to, okay, OFDM uses a bandwidth up to 20 megahertz, am I right? So, 20 megahertz which is several times greater than GSM or exactly if you say the bandwidth of OFDM that is 20 megahertz which is almost 100 times that of GSM. So, it is supporting a higher bandwidth and which implies what which implies higher bandwidth so which implies the higher data rate also and this is the reason why we use this OFDM in 4G wireless standards ok. Now not only for cellular standards but several Wi-Fi standards or WLAN standards also uses what OFDM because it has a higher data rate. Now let us see what is the principle behind this OFDM ok let us see what is the principle behind this OFDM.
principle of OFDM. Now, if you consider, okay, so for learning the principle, just consider a communication system, okay, conventional, you just consider con conventional communication system, a normal communication system, okay, this is what we consider normally, okay, which is having a, uh, that if you, when you consider a communication system, it will have a particular bandwidth, okay, with a particular bandwidth, say, say a 10 megahertz, okay, let us take it as 10 megahertz, okay, and having and let this communication system have a single carrier, okay, this is what normally happens, okay, single carrier that is placed at, that is placed at a single carrier frequencies, this is what we know, so let us consider such a communication system with a, with a, let us consider a communication system, okay, with a particular bandwidth, okay, let this be the bandwidth and let us take this as equal to say 10 megahertz, okay. So, this is the bandwidth, okay. And of course, this communication system is just having a single carrier. So, this is that single carrier and this single carrier will be placed where? It will be placed at that single carrier frequency, okay. This is the normal communication system, okay. Normal communication system and the spectrum is uh, as shown. So, when such a communication system is considered, how will you calculate the symbol time? How will you calculate the symbol time? The symbol time it can be calculated as 1 divided by the bandwidth, okay, 1 divided by bandwidth. And here it is 1 divided by what? 10 megahertz, that is 1 divided by 10 into 10 raised to 6 hertz, which you will get it as 0 0.1 microseconds. And if you observe a channel, we have learned that delay spread, okay, we have learned the term delay spread and let me denote the term delay spread by TD, okay, delay spread. We have learned this term before and what is this TS denote? It is denoting the symbol duration or symbol time, okay. And we have learned this delay spread of a channel is usually. 2 to 3 microsecond, okay, it comes in the range 2 to 3 microseconds. So, what we have got here, what we are observing here, for this communication system, the symbol time that is 0 0.1 microsecond is much lesser than this much, is much lesser than the delay spread, am I right? 2 to 3 microsecond is the delay spread and this symbol time which is 0 0.1 microsecond is much lesser than the delay spread, okay, it is much lesser than the delay spread. So, what happens when the symbol time is much lesser than the delay spread, we know inter symbol interference will occur, okay, this is a distortion, this is the distortion, inter symbol interference, okay distortion occurs. But is it favorable? No. We have to remove this distortion. So, in order to remove this distortion, what we have to do? We have to make symbol time much greater than delay spread. If we can make symbol time greater than delay spread, we can eliminate what ISI. Okay. So, in order to make that symbol time much greater than delay spread, what I am going to do is, I am going to divide this much bandwidth into so many sub bands or sub bandwidth. I am going to divide this bandwidth B into many sub bands. Okay. So, what I am going to do is, earlier we considered a communication system with this much bandwidth say B. Okay. Now, I am going to divide this bandwidth into n sub bands, okay, or n bandwidths. I am going to divide it into many sub bands. Let me say n sub bands, okay. So, to overcome this ISI, what we are doing? We are having that larger bandwidth. We take that larger bandwidth, this much is the larger bandwidth, and I am going to split it into sub bands. Okay, what smaller bands, n sub bands and at each sub bands, I am going to place a sub carrier, I am going to place a sub carrier, I am going to place a sub carrier. The conventional system we saw there was only a one, there was only 
a single carrier which was placed at that single frequency am i right this was only the single carrier was used but now what we are doing we are using multiple carriers am i right we are using multiple carriers are used so in each sub band we are placing one sub carrier this was the total bandwidth okay 10 megahertz b is equal to 10 megahertz now we have divided it into so many sub bands so what is the bandwidth of each sub band it will be of course equal to b by n total bandwidth divided by n sub bands okay now if you calculate the symbol time symbol time is equal to 1 divided by the bandwidth so what is this much bandwidth total bandwidth divided by how many sub bands n that is 1 by b by n am i right so of course earlier the symbol time was 1 by bandwidth b where b was a larger quantity but now b is reduced to b by n so of course when we are reducing the bandwidth factor what will happen to the symbol time of course this b by n term is much lesser than the bandwidth which we considered here okay this much this bandwidth let me write it as b okay this bandwidth so this b by n is much lesser than b so what happens the symbol time ts will get increased am i right this denominator is reduced so symbol time will get increased and finally we can make this symbol time much greater than the delay spread am i right so by dividing that bandwidth into so many sub bands what we have achieved we have made the symbol time greater than the delay spread and what is this condition means okay this is the condition for zero isi okay this is the condition for zero isi or zero in the symbol interference so we can say in this system okay in this system where we used multiple carriers okay in this system where we used multiple carriers there is no isi there is no isi in the system when we used multiple sub bands or multiple carriers multiple sub bands or multiple there is no isi okay now this is the principle behind ofdm in ofdm also in ofdm also we are using multi carrier we are using multi carrier this is the principle behind ofdm so such a system okay such a system with multiple sub carriers or multiple sub bands eliminate isi so we can say so we can say there is there is no inter symbol interference in the system in the system where where we use where we use multiple sub bands or multiple sub carriers okay and such a system and such a system and such a system with multiple sub carriers okay and such a system with multiple sub carriers or multiple sub bands is called is called a multi carrier modulated system multi carrier modulated system or mcms system okay and this is the and this is the basis okay which forms the basis which is the basis of OFDM. So we can say in short we can say OFDM OFDM is a OFDM is a multi carrier modulated subsystem okay it is a multi carrier modulated subsystem okay multi carrier modulated subsystem which helps in which helps in 
smooth transmission of data in where in wide band wireless subsystem and this forms the basis of ofdm so what we have seen is ofdm is the key standard in 4g wireless standards including cellular standard as well as in wimax as well as in wifi wlan standards okay it's a broadband technology and the principle behind ofdm is using multiple sub carriers okay by which we can eliminate isi and so msms mcms sorry it is mcms that is multiple carrier modulated subsystem it forms the basis of ofdm thank you